welcome to the first public Midmaster seminar. Thanks for coming. Lots of you here, which is really cool. We're going to cover all the kind of latest developments I've been working on in the pad. First of all, obviously, I've got to assess where you are and your levels and what you're working at. So we'll just do kind of a warm-up round where you can do whatever you like. If you box, just box. If you do Muay Thai, add in the Muay Thai. If you add in some of the MMA, if you MMA, that would be cool. And we'll get lots of stuff covered today. Loads of stuff so that you can take away some cool drills. Everyone cool with that? So who's traveled from the furthest here? Is anyone from Europe? Okay, cool, where are you from? Belgium. Belgium, cool. Austria. Austria, is that fair or close? I'm not sure. Latvia. Latvia. <laughs> you live in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Not where you were born. <laughs> and Eric's come from? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Ah. Give him a round of applause. Nice. <laughs> come a long way to be here. I'll show you some stuff. <laughs> uh, so, grab your partner. Just a light warm up round, whatever you like to do to get warm, really light on the pad, don't bang, we're going to be in three or four hours today, so you don't want to go too hard. Warm up, nice and gentle, do your normal pad work that you would do. Ready, off you go, right, let's have a look. Um, your pad work tends to be very attacker orientated, there's not a lot of defensive work going on with the pad work. So, that's the whole thing about the pads, you should be able to hit your partner back with the pads right, so they can work on evasion, footwork, slipping, movement blocking. So you need to add a little bit more of that to your pad work, which we'll do throughout the day. And you also need to uh, remember the four R's when you're hitting the pad. So does anyone know what the four R's are? R? No. Okay. Range. Throw the technique at the right range. Some of you are throwing your crosses kind of at this range, a little bit too short. You're not really extending and rotating. The second R is rotation. So you obviously need to rotate on your cross, rotate on your hook, rotate when you kick. Uh, retraction, some of you are retracting your hands a bit low so they're dropping on the way back, go across, dropping on the way back and you're going to get counted, right? So nice snappy retraction back to stance, hands up, elbows down, chin down, and recovery to stance. So I noticed a couple of people kicking and then their foot would go out wide, or they'd kick and their foot would cross over, or they'd kick and their feet would come together, which is a bad habit. So, so whichever kick you do, you've got to go back to the same stance. So it's first R is range, second R is rotation on every technique. Third R, retraction. retraction, everything comes back, and then fourth R, recovery. recovery to stand. Yeah, so, just do another round, but focus on those things. If you see your partner, for example, like throwing the jab cross at this sort of distance, you can throw it at that sort of distance, but it's not as effective as if you get good rotation, good range, and really extend on your punches, okay? Retraction, you're gonna check your partner's retraction, so whenever they hit something, you're gonna make sure their hands come back, Afterwards, on kicks, knees, punches, everything. Okay, rotation, make sure they rotate into their hooks, rotate into the uppercuts, rotate into their round ass kicks. So you blend that in as well. And recovery to stance. So make sure you're moving around, your partner's always in a good stance. They should never have their feet too close together, they should never have feet too wide apart, they should never cross their feet at a beginning level. Cool? Yeah. Ready, let's go! Say, other partner, work on those four concepts. Too long. So you're throwing it out like this, which means you're going to hit with the wrong part of your hand. So you are throwing it too close and it's curving back towards you, which means the power is not going to cleanly hit the target. So you want three 90 degree angles on your hook. You want a 90 degree angle on your lead foot. This is if you're doing boxing, not if you're doing tie boxing. A 90 degree twist on your lead foot. Your elbow comes to 90 degrees to the floor. And again, close it. Stop, freeze it. So I want a 90 degree angle between the elbow and the floor. That protects you against the cross. If the elbow is too low, I can come over the top. If your elbow is too high, it jerks a rotated cut and leads to injury, right? So 90 degrees. And then you want 90 degrees between your forearm and the chest so that you get the right angle. Because you don't want to pull your punch back towards you when you hit the target and you don't want to <coughs> extend. You just want a nice clean contact like that. So 90 degree twist. Cool. So 90 degree turn, elbow at 90 degree, forearm to chest at 90 degrees, right hand up. Add that in, so twist on your cross and then get your 90 degree turn on your hook. Go! So when Tina does the hook, I'm going to check her guard by calming with the right pad towards the head stop. Mm -hmm. no. So I shouldn't be able to hit her in the head with this, with this pad, okay? So her elbow should be sufficiently high. You can also check your partner's guard during any punch, right? So if she hits the right pad, I can hit her with the left pad back. So that's that side of the head covered, for example. So you go your cross, not enough twist, a bit more. That's better. Okay. You've really got to think about that much twist in your, in your punches to get decent power and range. Okay, so she does the cross. I can check on this side, she does the cross. You can check on that side. That's the one that you're going to drop. When you throw the cross, you're going to drop the left hand. And it's hard to get the pad there in time because you just hit the right pad. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
She's hit the right pad. I want to check it up, but by that time she's back to stand. The time she's going to drop it is as she throws it. So you just use your left pad like a back fist, just to check that the hands still up. So if we just go with the cross again, she twists. No, 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 no. Left shoulder back. Yeah, that's good. Left shoulder back. Left, pa left hand can go straight back, and then left hand can go underneath. Off you go. Just check your partner's guard. Left hand to the right hand side. Left hand to the left hand side. You're going to do the cross and you're going to tell your partner off if they're not twisting enough to Then you're going to bring the left hand back to their head to make sure that's up. Then they're going to throw it across and your left hand goes underneath at the same time as they punch. Not afterwards, because they can get their hand back and bring their hand up. Right? Same time as they punch, that goes up. Then you're going to do the hook and you're going to check your partner's elbows up by throwing the cross at the same time. So we're doing cross, cross, hook this time. Right cross, check with the left hand on that side. Right cross. Check at the same time, left hook, elbow up. Off you go. Range. What's the right range for the cross? This range is not really the right range for the cross. You can do a short cross where you pop your elbow up as you throw it. But this is probably oh, sorry. better range for what? Elbow. Point. Okay. So the cross, you can throw the cross here. But really, if you want to get maximum penetration through the target and maximum force on it, see, it's much better, isn't it? Yeah. You increase your power 25% if you just add your shoulders to the punch. No, straight. Through the middle, switch. Bit of poaching here. Yeah. Nice. Turn. <laughs> cool. Then the hook. You want to get the elbows up on the hook. So we're going to go cross, cross, hook. One cross. Think about rotation. Second cross. Hand back. Hook. Elbows got to be up. Off you go. Cross, cross, hook. And then get it on. We really could just focus on the jab, cross, hook and uppercut for the next four hours. But you probably wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> but the punches will get better. So we'll show some other stuff as well so you get a bit of variety and you get to see some of the more advanced techniques. But um, advanced techniques are just basics done really well. If you've got your basics solid, all the advanced techniques work. Not enough basics down, advanced techniques don't work. So remember to focus on the four R's. What's the first R? Range. Range. Every technique has an optimal range. This is not the optimal range for a randos kick. It's, it's just not, right? And this is not the optimal range for a round ass kick. So you've just got to find the right range based on your body uh, for every technique. Punches, knees, elbows, kicks, headbutts, whatever you like. Uh, what's the second R? <coughs> rotation. Even straight techniques have rotation, do you, Jeb? So see how he steps in, his shoulders rotate, and then he's jabbing on the end of it. So a lot of people jab like this, their shoulders are square, once again. There's a rotation element to every single technique, even straight techniques, even front kicks. So get the rotation right. Then, retraction. You've got to bring things back. Obviously, if you do like a lazy jab, drop your hand, you, you get kind of, everyone knows that, right? You throw it across, you drop your hand, and then you get the head kick. Even on kicks, you throw the kick and you're off balance, and then you get the big sweep going in. So, retraction. Get everything back as quickly as possible, especially with kicks. Some of you kick very nicely up, but then it comes really slow down, which means you're going to get sweat, right? So you've got to get your retraction down nice and quick. Then what? Recover back to a balanced, stable stance, especially with kicking. So one of the things you can do with a hook is if you get good rotation into your cross and then your hook frequently. And again, please. Do that again, please. Oh, so I, like to, <laughs> I like to move the pad on the hook now and then. Not on the cross. If you do it on the cross and move the pad, they hyperextend their elbow and they get angry with you. But on hooks and uppercuts, just move it out of the way now and then, just to see if they've got good control over their rotation and recovery. Because I've seen in a fight I saw a few years ago, go through a hook, missed the other guy and did a 360. He threw a punch that hard and with that poor technique, he actually span around in a circle. So you don't want to do that, right? So if you miss the hook, you should be built and then back to a stance. Cool? So let's do double pad trigger drills. Anytime I double up the pad, it means two of the same. So the jab is usually on the left hand side of my body. So I could give them a single jab. So if I put two here, it's a double jab. And I move the pad out of the way to represent the head snapping back. So the first jab hits me, my head snaps back a bit. So then he steps in for the second. So it's usually left pad up, right pad behind it. Make sure you can see what's going on. So my elbow's down. On the cross, it's usually on the right hand side of my body. So it's right pad up, left pad behind it. Cross, cross. Okay. On the hook, right in front, two hooks. You can do the same with the right hook. On the body shot to uh, uppercut, you go body shot and then uppercut. Okay. So we'll just work the punches first. So this means I don't have to say double jab, double cross. 
my fighters know if this appears, it's a double. Two pads together is a double. And move the pad out of the way afterwards because the head's going to snap back when you get hit. So you've got to move the pad to give them a new target. Double hook. Double hook. Good. And you can go liver shot, left uppercut. Or you can go double uppercut. Got it? Do you want to see it again? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, no. usually if the left pad is my jab pad, remember don't hold it wide, it wants to be, everything I try and do is in line with my shoulders. Anything I go outside of the shoulders, you're going to get injured. When a really big, strong person punches it over your shoulder, it's like, mm, you're rotating cuff goes, right? So keep everything within your shoulders. Double jab, one, two, sorry, my fight, anyway. Double jab, one, two, double cross, one, two, double hook. Experiment with how it feels and which pad feels better on top, you're going to feel it yourself. And then double right up. Okay, because sometimes feeling the same punch twice works really well. Everyone expects an alternating punch, but if you go the same punch twice, sometimes it gets through. Okay, ready? Remember the four R's while you're doing this. Off you go! Double pad I like to hold the pads like this for kicks. Because I've been kicked in the face too many times holding pads like this. Oh, right. Okay, that hurts. So I always put my elbow up so if Rich screws up, he kicks my elbows and breaks his foot, it's his fault, and then he won't kick me again, right? So I always put my elbows up when I hold the round ass kick with pads, uh, not the tie pads obviously, but with focus mitts. So if I'm doing a round ass kick to the body, I like to hold it right there so my elbow is protecting my head. However, that does look like the body shot for the double uppercut, doesn't it? Double uppercut. So how do you dis distinguish between the two? Oh, Rick. Rick? Yeah, you guys are good. So if I'm at this distance, this is a round nose kick. Right, if I'm here, you're not going to round nose kick, you're going to punch it, so that's, that's why. Okay, so here we go, double jab, move the pad out of the way, double cross turn, <laughs> double hook, rotation, double hook, Ooh. double hook, nice double up cut, and stick in the kick if you want. Ready, off you go! Double jab, double pop, a couple, double hook. couple of problems with your uppercuts. Your elbows are too far out when you hit with the uppercut, which means you're going to hit with a small knock of your hand, which is going to break your hand. Um, you're pulling it back towards yourself again, or extending it too long and hitting with the wrong part hand. So, Rich is in front of me. Let's just go with a standard uppercut. He wants to drive off his back leg, and then his elbow wants to come towards center line. So you don't throw your uppercut like this. Your elbow goes right into the middle of your body, and right through your center line. Your chin is down and you drive off your back foot. And then you don't pull it back to yourself either. It goes straight up underneath the chin and then back to guard. Right? So not wide out, not too long, not back to yourself, which I've seen someone do on the pads, punch themselves in the face with an upgun. <laughs> so bend your legs, drive, elbow to the center. Elbow to the center gets better rotation into your uppercut. Gives you more power. The elbow out to the side is not as strong as having this elbow driving like a piston straight up through the middle. So let's spend like 10 seconds on the uppercut, 30 seconds on the uppercut, driving up that back leg, twisting in 90 degrees, recovery, and then mixing the double pads. Uppercut first, then double pads. Go! Yeah. 